By every stretch of the imagination, Tina Louise has lived an amazing life. The exciting transition from her interest in entertainment to getting trained and dazzling us on the silver screen is certainly a story for the ages. But perhaps the most interesting part of her life are the things she achieved and did without the cameras. But her story cannot be told unless we start from the beginning. Childhood Early Interest Tina Louise, originally Tina Blacker, was born on February 11, 1934, in New York City. Her parents split when she was four, leaving her to be raised by her mom, Sylvia, a model. Her dad, Joseph, started off owning a candy store in Brooklyn and later became an accountant. Tina, the only child, grew up bouncing between her dad's candy store and her mom's world of fashion. Looking back, one may wonder how it is that Tina gained her interest and passion for acting. Some say it was because her mother was already a model and into showbiz, but when Tina was just two years old, she got her first taste of showbiz, and it marked a remarkable time in her life. She starred in an ad for her dad's candy shop, and although it did not seem like much at the time, Tina couldn't even remember much of what she did, but it set up an unconscious foundation of where her life would be headed later on, the entertainment industry. As Tina grew older, her interest in entertainment grew with her. She was known to be creative and interesting to be around. Tina attended PS6, Scarborough Day School, and later Miami University. But even while school was good and important for her, there was a deep longing in her heart, a hole there that nothing else could feel but what she really wanted to do, and that was to be an entertainer of some sort. Things took a turn when, at 17, Tina decided to do something about her interest, and so she decided to try her luck in acting, singing, and dancing. She started learning the ropes under Sanford Meisner at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in Manhattan, and from the moment she attended her first class, she already knew that this was where she wanted to be. This was where she belonged. For years, Tina trained herself in the world of entertainment, and for years she began to hunt for opportunities where she could shine and showcase her talent. Tina's music venture. And now here is where Tina's life gets even more interesting, because as she searched for greener pastures, she decided to delve into something else in the entertainment industry that no one expected her to be good at, music. Let's step back to 1957 when Tina Louise decided to try her hand at making music. She came out with an album called It's Time for Tina, which became a cool part of her journey in the entertainment world. To make this happen, Tina teamed up with Jim Timmons and Buddy Weed's orchestra, creating 12 songs for the album. It's like a musical adventure featuring tracks like Tonight is the Night and the timeless I'm in the Mood for Love. What's even more exciting is that the legendary saxophonist Coleman Hawkins joined in, adding a jazzy vibe to Tina's tunes. Even till today, Tina's music is still alive and kicking. The album has been brought back not once, but twice on CD, with the latest comeback happening on Harkett Records from the UK. And guess what? In 2012, It's Time for Tina made its digital debut on iTunes, so a new bunch of people could groove to Tina's melodies. But that's not all. Tina also dipped her toes into making music with United Artists Records. Although she only made one single for them in 1958, it's proof that Tina could rock not just on the screen, but also on the musical stage. The public opinion on her career took a dramatic turn as people began to realize that Tina Louise, the actress they knew from Gilligan's Island, also has this cool musical side. Her album and single might not be as famous as her TV shows, but they're like hidden gems, waiting to be discovered by those who want to take a musical journey with Tina. Back to acting. After tinkering with music a bit, Tina decided to return to her first love, which was acting, and apparently, 1958 turned out to be her year. In 1958, Tina Louise stepped into the world of cinema with her debut in God's Little Acre. As expected, Tina gave it her all. She knew that if she nailed it, it would open more doors of opportunity for her, and that would be the beginning of great things for her. 
She believed she had all it took to be able to make it in Hollywood. She was well aware that looks were also a big part of success in Hollywood, and so she leaned into her talents as well as her beauty. And it paid off because later that same year she gained recognition when the National Art Council crowned her the world's most beautiful redhead. And it turned out that recognition helped push her career and dreams forward because the following year was equally great for her too. She shared the screen with Robert Ryan in Day of the Outlaw and went on to become a leading lady alongside stars like Robert Taylor and Richard Widmark, often taking on serious roles. By this time, Tina was becoming a bit more confident and comfortable in the industry. She was also beginning Gert busier and more in demand. As a matter of fact, she began turning down roles in films like Lil Abner and Operation Petticoat, but even at that, Tina's career still took diverse turns. For one, she ventured into Broadway and Italian cinema, starring in films such as The Siege of Syracuse and Garibaldi in 1960. But after a while, she began to feel a little homesick and there was no better feeling than performing in the States. So Tina made the decision to return to the U.S. where she continued honing her craft by studying under Lee Strasberg and joining the Actors Studio in 1962. Her versatility shone when she guest starred on the Real McCoys in 1962, and later appeared alongside Bob Denver in the Beach Party film For Those Who Think Young in 1964. In 1964, she took on the iconic role of movie star Ginger Grant in the sitcom Gilligan's Island. Despite the show's success, Tina grew dissatisfied, fearing typecasting. She left the Broadway musical Fade Out, Fade In for the small screen. Though she continued working in film and TV, Tina lamented that playing Ginger had hindered her movie career. She didn't participate in subsequent Gilligan's Island sequels, with other actresses taking on the role of Ginger post-Gilligan's Island. Tina pursued a steady acting career, appearing in diverse roles such as the Matt Helm spy spoof, The Wrecking Crew, 1969, with Dean Martin and The Stepford Wives, 1975. Seeking to break free from her comedic image, she embraced darker roles, playing a heroin addict in a 1974 episode of Kojak and a cruel corrections officer in the 1976 TV movie Nightmare in Batham County. Television continued to be a significant platform for Tina, with appearances in Look What's Happened to Rosemary's Baby, 1976, SST Death Flight, 1977, and the soap opera Dallas during the 1978-1979 seasons. In the fall of 1984, she took on the role of Taylor Chapin in the syndicated soap opera Rituals, succeeding Joe Ann Flug. Tina's toxic relationship with her character, Ginger. As we earlier discussed, Tina progressed in her career, but this time she was not just desperate for roles like she once was. She began to dislike typecasting, and she would reject any roles that were not in line with the type of actress she wanted to become. She wanted to be known as more than just Ginger of Gilligan's Island, and so she pressed on for that. Thankfully, Tina Louise's journey in the entertainment world extended beyond her iconic role as Ginger Grant on Gilligan's Island. In 1987, she co-starred in the Robert Altman comedy O.C. and Stiggs and later appeared in the independently made satire Johnny Sued in 1992, where she shared the screen with a young Brad Pitt. Her versatility in both film and television remained evident when she took on the role of Miss Beck in an episode of the situation comedy Married with Children, titled Kelly Bounces Back in 1990. As the years unfolded, Tina continued to add diverse roles to her repertoire. In 2014, she ventured into the realms of spirituality and horror, starring in the drama Tapestry and the chilling film Late Phases. While she declined to participate in the Gilligan's Island reunion television films, Tina didn't entirely shy away from the show's legacy. She made brief walk-on appearances on talk shows and specials, including Good Morning America, 1982, The Late Show, 1988, and the 2004 TV Land Award Show, standing alongside other surviving cast members. The 1990s saw a heartwarming reunion with her Gilligan's Island co-stars Bob Denver, Don Wells, and Russell Johnson in an episode of Roseanne. 
However, she did not join them for the television film Surviving Gilligan's Island 2001, where Kristen Dalton portrayed Ginger. Rumors swirled about strained relations between Tina and Bob Denver, but in 2005 she penned a brief yet affectionate memorial to him in the year-end farewell issue of Entertainment Weekly after his passing. In December 2020, following the news of Don Wells' passing, Tina Louise addressed long-standing rumors, denying any resentment towards her role as Ginger Grant. She expressed genuine affection for her character, especially after the show's creators began tailoring scripts specifically for her. Grateful for the show's enduring popularity, she acknowledged the comfort it provided to fans, particularly during challenging times like the COVID-19 pandemic. As letters poured in, she realized that Gilligan's Island had become a generational escape, with fathers now sharing the show with their children, creating a lasting legacy of joy and connection family and personal life. Let's zoom in on Tina Louise's personal life between 1966 and 1971. During this time, she was married to a guy named Les Crane, who worked in radio and TV. Together, they had a daughter named Caprice. Now, Caprice didn't just follow in her mom's footsteps. She became an MTV producer and even tried her hand at writing novels. Tina and Les appeared as a married couple on a TV show called Love American Style in 1973. It's like they brought a bit of their real-life love to the small screen. Now, let's talk about Caprice Crane. She's not only known for being Tina's daughter, but also for her own achievements. In 2006, she released her first novel called Stupid and Contagious. What's sweet is that she dedicated it to her mom, Tina Louise. So, here's the family scoop Tina, Les, and Caprice, a trio with their own stories unfolding both on and off the screen. It's like a little family drama playing out in the background of Tina's well-known acting career. However, aside from her family, Tina is also involved in a lot of other things. Tina Louise isn't just a familiar face on the big and small screens. She's also a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and a lifetime member of the Actors Studio. But there's more to Tina than just acting. She's a strong supporter of literacy and education. Tina rolls up her sleeves and dives into volunteer teaching at Learning Leaders, a nonprofit that helps kids in New York City with tutoring. For her, it's not just about teaching reading, it's about boosting their confidence, self-determination, and showing them their own potential. Tina is all about making a difference in young lives, but that's not all. She's also an author. Tina poured her experiences into her first book, a memoir called Sunday, released in 1998. It's like a peek into the first eight years of her life. Then in 2007, Tina switched gears and wrote a children's book called When I Grow Up. For her, passing on the love for reading to kids is crucial because it sticks with them forever. Tina even went on a book tour, hitting up places like New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Philadelphia, and the Festival of Books at UCLA. Her third book, What Does a Bee Do?, came out in 2009 and focuses on something super important, the honeybee depopulation syndrome. It's not just for kids, it's also an educational tool for adults. The book got a thumbs up from Joel Klein, the chancellor of New York City Public Schools, plus there's an animated version in the works. So besides entertaining us on screen, Tina Louise is busy making a positive impact in education, literacy, and even the world of buzzing bees, her notable awards. Tina Louise's journey in the world of entertainment is not just marked by her captivating performances, but also by the recognition and accolades she has received for her contributions. While Tina is known for her iconic role as Ginger Grant on Gilligan's Island, her awards and honors extend beyond the confines of the television screen. Throughout her illustrious career, Tina Louise has garnered appreciation for her acting prowess, earning accolades that underline her talent and versatility, while specific awards might not be as plentiful as her impact on popular culture. Tina's ability to leave a lasting impression is undeniable. One notable recognition in her career is her membership in the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, an esteemed institution that honors outstanding achievements in the film industry. Being part of this prestigious academy is a testament to Tina's standing among her peers in the cinematic world. Additionally, Tina Louise holds a lifetime membership at the Actors Studio. 
a renowned organization that has been a breeding ground for some of the finest talents in the performing arts. This recognition reflects her commitment to honing her craft and contributing to the rich legacy of the theatrical arts. While specific award wins may not be as prominently documented, Tina's enduring presence in the entertainment industry and her membership in esteemed institutions underline the respect and admiration she has earned throughout her career. Her impact goes beyond accolades, resonating with audiences and fellow professionals alike, making Tina Louise a cherished figure in the world of entertainment. Her influence on fashion Tina Louise's influence on the world of fashion is as timeless as her on-screen presence. From her portrayal of the glamorous Ginger Grant in Gilligan's Island to her dazzling red carpet appearances, Tina has consistently showcased a keen sense of style that resonates with fans and fashion enthusiasts alike. As Ginger Grant, Tina Louise not only brought the character to life with her acting prowess, but also left an indelible mark on the fashion landscape. Ginger's island chic wardrobe, characterized by flowing dresses, statement accessories, and glamorous beachwear became iconic. The show's popularity catapulted these looks into the mainstream, influencing fashion trends of the era and leaving a lasting impact on how people perceived resort wear. Beyond the small screen, Tina Louise's red carpet looks have been a source of inspiration for fashion enthusiasts. Her ability to effortlessly combine sophistication with a touch of allure has set her apart as a true fashion icon. Whether attending premieres, award ceremonies, or charity events, Tina's wardrobe choices have consistently made headlines, showcasing her versatility and flair for making a statement. What makes Tina's impact on fashion truly noteworthy is her ability to adapt to evolving styles while maintaining a distinct and timeless aesthetic. Her fashion choices have not only reflected the trends of each era but have often set new standards, earning her a reputation as a trailblazer in the world of style. Tina Louise's influence extends beyond the garment she wears. It encompasses an attitude of confidence and elegance that has resonated with generations. Her fashion legacy serves as a testament to the enduring power of style to captivate and inspire, making Tina Louise a perennial icon in the ever-evolving world of fashion. Tina's Passion for Literature Tina Louise's dedication to improving child literacy goes beyond the pages of her books. It's a heartfelt commitment that has made a tangible impact on young minds. Her advocacy for literacy is not just a cause she supports, but a passion she actively engages with to foster positive change. In 2007, Tina took a significant step by donating a portion of the proceeds from her book, When I Grow Up, to literacy programs. This financial support directly contributed to initiatives aimed at enhancing educational opportunities for children. By investing in literacy programs, Tina demonstrated her belief in the transformative power of education and the importance of providing young learners with the tools they need to succeed. Beyond financial contributions, Tina Louise has been hands-on in her efforts to promote child literacy. In a 2013 interview, she revealed her extensive volunteer work at local public schools since 1996. This extended period of involvement underscores her enduring commitment to making a positive impact on children's lives through direct engagement in educational settings. Tina's literary contributions also reflect her commitment to inspiring young minds. Her children's book, When I Grow Up, released in 2007, is a creative and humorous exploration of various animal kingdom achievements. Through imaginative comparisons, Tina encourages children to believe in their limitless potential, fostering a sense of empowerment and self-confidence. Following the success of When I Grow Up, Tina continued her literary journey in support of child literacy by publishing a second children's book in 2009 titled What Does a Bee Do? This book not only engages young readers with its educational content but also addresses the critical issue of honeybee depopulation syndrome, making it a unique and impactful addition to children's literature. 
Tina Louise's multifaceted approach to promoting child literacy, encompassing financial contributions, volunteer work, and engaging literature, highlights her commitment to creating a brighter future for young learners. Through her advocacy and tangible efforts, Tina continues to inspire children to embark on their own journeys of learning and discovery. Her contribution to women empowerment Tina Louise's advocacy extends into the realm of women's rights and empowerment, where she emerges as a powerful voice for positive change. Her commitment to gender equality goes beyond the spotlight, showcasing a passionate dedication to addressing crucial issues and supporting organizations that aim to reshape society into a more equitable space for women. Utilizing her platform, Tina Louise has consistently spoken out on important issues related to women's rights. Whether through interviews, public appearances, or social media, she leverages her voice to raise awareness about gender disparities and the importance of empowerment. By openly addressing these issues, Tina contributes to the ongoing conversation surrounding women's rights and challenges societal norms that may perpetuate inequality. In addition to her vocal advocacy, Tina actively supports organizations that work tirelessly to create a more equal society. These organizations may focus on various aspects of women's rights, including gender-based violence prevention, workplace equality, and reproductive rights. By aligning herself with these impactful organizations, Tina amplifies their efforts and contributes to the collective push for positive change. Furthermore, Tina's commitment to women's empowerment may extend to mentoring and inspiring the next generation of women, whether through mentorship programs, educational initiatives, or personal interactions, she plays a role in fostering a supportive environment that encourages women to pursue their goals and overcome societal challenges. Her Animal Rights Activism Tina Louise's compassion extends beyond the spotlight. She is a dedicated advocate for animal rights and welfare, leveraging her platform to support organizations committed to the protection and well-being of our furry friends. One of the prominent organizations Tina aligns herself with is the Humane Society of the United States, HSUS. This organization is at the forefront of the animal welfare movement, working tirelessly to combat animal cruelty, advocate for legislative change, and provide rescue and care for animals in need. Tina Louise's support for the Humane Society underscores her commitment to creating a world where animals are treated with kindness and compassion. In addition to her association with the Humane Society, Tina has also been involved with PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. PETA is renowned for its advocacy against animal cruelty in various industries, ranging from entertainment to fashion. Tina Louise's collaboration with PETA reflects her dedication to raising awareness about ethical treatment and encouraging others to adopt a cruelty-free lifestyle. Furthermore, Tina Louise has been an active supporter of the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals (ASPCA). The ASPCA is a venerable organization that has been working for over a century to rescue animals from abuse, pass humane laws, and support shelters nationwide. By aligning herself with the ASPCA, Tina contributes to the organization's mission of preventing cruelty and ensuring the welfare of animals across the United States. Tina Louise's involvement with these organizations not only showcases her personal commitment to animal rights, but also amplifies the collective efforts of these impactful institutions. Her advocacy serves as an inspiration, encouraging fans and the public to join the movement for a more compassionate and humane treatment of animals. Through her support for these organizations, Tina Louise continues to make a positive impact on the lives of our four-legged companions.